you are listening. Okay, these three amounts are posted to the general ledger. Okay, so your general ledger or main ledger it's, as it's called. Okay, if the general ledger is the sales account of £592, what side would it go on? Remember, use your pearls to help you. Brilliant. Okay, so that goes on your credit side. Okay, so this total is a credit in your sales account. What about the VAT then? What side? Excellent. Well done. That's brilliant. So what side will the total go on? Fabulous. And what would this, what would this total, what account would it go on? What, what's the account name? You can use the letters to it. You don't have to type it all in. What's the name of it? Receivables, ledger control account. Yep, perfect. So it used to be sales ledger control account. Now they've changed it to receivables ledger control account. So that's fantastic. Okay. So based on these accounts, yeah, Harvey, Pearson, et cetera, et cetera, what are they called? I called them subsidiary accounts last week, but then Alan corrected me and called it something else. What are they called? Memorandum accounts. Fantastic. Okay. So remember in the memorandum account, it goes on the same side as it does in the sales, uh, sorry, trade receivables or receivables ledger control account. And you enter them in individually. So if you've got more than one, so like on here, you've got Murray, you've got Harvey a couple of times. Remember, they're going as individual transactions in date order, okay? And they will go on the debit side of their account, okay? Because it's an asset, all right? And I've just marked somebody's work. Again, they would added it all together, yeah? So remember, in the memorandum account, it's individual, Okay, so then we've got the sales returns day book. Okay, so remember what I said last week, sales in the sales account, it's the sales that's recorded, so they're a credit. So in the sales returns account, what side would we put the net amount? Amazing. So what side would the VAT go? Perfect. And what about the total? What side of the trade receivables control account will it go? Fabulous. I'm so impressed with you guys. Okay. And then the individual amounts would go in the memorandum account. Keep wanting to say subsidiary. The memorandum account, and that is done using the total, okay? So the totals are entered as a credit in their account, and that reduces the amount they owe us, so it reduces the asset, okay? Everybody okay with that? Because I'm now going to move on. Okay, remember there's no stupid questions, so if you've got a question, just type it in and we'll go through it. Okay, then. So today's lesson, we're going to start looking at cash book. So this is cash book based on money coming in. So this is your customers or your sales, uh, cash sales coming in. All right. We'll move on to purchase ledger in, in, in a bit. Okay, then. So your cash book, what I need you to remember is that the debit is money coming in and credit is money 
going out, okay? Now, the in and out would only work, or I would ask you to only use it for the cash account, as in petty cash, or the bank account, okay? So what's happened here is where you'd normally have two T accounts, one saying cash and one saying bank, what this does is this cash book basically gets rid of those because what you've got is you've got a cash account and a bank account on debit and a cash account and bank account on credit, okay? So what we're going to do is we, as we go through this, we're going to see how money comes in, how money goes out and how we balance it off, okay? Now, it does take some getting your head around. So, you know, don't panic. But if you've got questions or you need me to go back over anything, remember, you do know I get excited when it comes to teaching accounts. So we can go back. So if I'm going too fast, please tell me to stop and we'll go back and, um, you know, I'll... I'll go over what we've what we've gone through okay okay then so let's move on to the next slide if i can get my pen i'm just going to click it just click it sam just click it there we go okay then so what we've got here i spent two mornings trying to grasp this and can't well hopefully michelle i will put it in simple sam's terms and you'll be able to so what we've got is we've got a cash book okay all i'm interested in is what's happening on this side at cash book at minute okay so we're just we're just looking at the um the sales side at cash book okay so what it says in here is that on the 25th of august we've made a cash sale of 360 pound okay we're going to assume that the business is registered for VAT so we've received the money and this is physical money this is physical cash we've received okay because if it was a check we'd need to put it in bank to clear because if you put a check in a petty cash tin it's not going to turn to cash is it even if you're a very good magician okay then so we've got to record this in the accounts so what you've got to remember is the debit entry has already been posted because it's been debited into the cash account. We now need to get the books to balance because at the minute, the don't. Your debit side is outweighing the credit side. So you know by using your pearls, but also by using the knowledge of the cash book, which says it's a debit, the opposite entries has got to be a credit, okay? So, to work out your VAT, yeah, it's 360 divided by 6. So, we've got £60 VAT. So, that means that in the sales account, we're going to credit the account 300 and we're going to credit the VAT account 60, okay? The detail will be cash book I'm, I'm just doing it abbreviated because you know my writing is quite big and if we were to if there was more than one transaction we'd then date it the 31st of august if we were balancing it off at end of year or at end of month sorry okay that is it in a nutshell it gets a bit more complicated when there's more transactions in there yeah, but can you see now when it's cash sales, it's got to be posted to the sales and VAT account because that means you've made a sale, they've paid for it immediately and you've put it in your cash book, but no other entry has been made, okay? So if you didn't make these entries, your accounts wouldn't balance, okay? Does that make sense? So far, good. Brilliant. OK, that's what I want to hear. Right then. So now let's have a look at it when we've got more than one transaction. Now, what we're doing is, is we're analysing the cash book now. Ignore this side for time being. We don't need that. So what we're doing is, is we've made cash sale on 25th of August. We've made a cash sale on the 29th of August. And what we need to do is we need to balance off the cash book and then enter them into the main ledger. 
Now, remember, the reason why we're balancing it off is because we put the total in. We don't put individual transactions in the main ledger, okay? So all we're doing is, is we're totaling the column. Remember, this is physical cash. Don't worry about the bank column yet. I've paid nothing into bank, okay? So then you've got £100, and then you should have that plus that should give me 600 okay? And that plus that should then equal, okay? So all I've done is I've just balanced it off. Because what I want to do, I want to enter the totals into the cash, into the um, sales and VAT account, okay? So I've got 500, I've got 100, that's cash book, cash book, 31st of 8th, 31st of the 8th, okay? Don't, oh, I don't need to do any debits because the debits is already done, okay? So these are like memorandum accounts, you know, like the um, the customer accounts. They, they're, they're like a reminder that you've got to do something in the ledgers. So don't think just because you've totaled it up, that's it. Because without physically entering these amounts into this account, you've, en you've not entered them into ledger. All you've done is enter them into cash book, okay? So I need you, that's very, very simple, me putting it into simple terms, all right? It'll look a bit more complicated as we move on. But if you can grasp what I'm saying, yeah? So when it comes to do, when we come to do the credit side, yeah? Anything that we're doing in cash columns would is basically a cash account. Anything we're doing in bank columns is a bank account, okay? So you balance them off separately, which we will go through. I'm not just going to let you do it on your own, okay? So that's an analysed cash book where we've analysed it out and then we've put it into the sales and VAT account. So now it all balances, okay? So we're okay to move on, all right? Okay, then let's move on to the next one. Okay, now what we're going to do is we've got a cash sale, okay? So we've dealt with this cash sale on that last one. What I want to now deal with is this, okay? G Hall. Well, if you remember back, G Hall was a debtor to us. He was a trade receivable. He owed us money, okay? So he became an asset to us. Now, what he's done is we've sold him the goods, we've entered it into the sales day book, we've posted the sales, we've posted the VAT, okay, and we posted those at the time that we completed the day book, okay? So it's important to remember when a, cre when a credit customer pays you, you're not analysing the sales and the VAT again. You've already done that when you did your day book, okay? So all we're doing is if we were to balance it off, yeah, we'd have 360 there, three, oh, 373, 14, 60 and 300, okay? So that's the total. We've dealt with this on previous slides, so I don't want to deal with that again. What I do want to deal with is this £373.14, okay? Now, if they've paid us and it's a debit in the cash book, it means that we've got to credit something, okay? And what we're doing is, is we're crediting the receivables letter contro uh, ledger control account, 373.14, cash book, if there were more than one in there, I wish you'd stop doing that. If there was more than one in there, you'd, you'd credit the total, okay? And I'm just going to put the 2nd of September because obviously they've closed the day book off at 31st. This is just an example, okay? So now it's posted. Your main ledgers are posted because your cash book your cash and bank account in your cash book is a main ledger. So your debits and credits now per, now balance, okay? 
What you've got to remember to do, though, is you've got to also post it in their account. Because if we didn't, it looks like he still owes us money. Okay? So what you're going to do, if it's on the credit side in control account, it goes on the credit side in their account. Okay? I'm just going to put 2nd of September. Okay. That's as easy as it gets or as hard as it gets, all right? But you have to think about it when you've got more transactions. Does that make sense? Danny, have you got it? Yeah, everything good? Fantastic. Okay, so... What I'm going to do is I want you to think about what I've just said when we move on and it gets a little bit more complicated, okay? The information I've just given you there is exactly the same whether you've got one transaction or 100 transactions, okay? So I want you to just think about that and don't panic when I show you one that's got a bit more transactions in, okay? This one, for instance... Okay, so the AAT, when you're, or businesses, when you're working for a business, they want to know you understand how to balance off a cash book, okay? A lot of companies will use Sage or QuickBooks, Iris, whatever, okay, because it's computerized. But I believe that if you can do it manually, computerized, is absolutely simple, okay? So your knowledge comes from your manual knowledge. So all these people that, you know, phone me up and say, Sam, I want to move straight on to level three. I, I, I use Sage, I know double entry. Yeah, but you know, you know double entry based on a computer doing it for you, okay? So what you need is you need the knowledge to be able to rectify and understand the workings behind the computer because if something goes wrong, you've got to be able to put it right, okay? So this is why it's important to have a really good understanding about double entry bookkeeping. Okay then, so got a cash book again. As you can see, we've got the cash column and the bank column. Cash column, bank column. This is in and this is out, okay? So if we were having, if we had a T account, We'd have a T account called cash and one called bank, okay? All this is, I don't like writing on it, it keeps going off, is a T account but with two columns, one for cash and one for bank, okay? That's all it is. Okay, then. So, what it tells me in this cash book, it says on the 1st of September, we had cash of £360.52, so whether you think of a petty cash or your wallet or purse, whatever, and then we had money in the bank of £150.75. And I know it's in the bank because it's on debit side, which is an asset, okay? Now, <clears throat> this is just a, a you know, a, um, a bit of a tip for exam, okay? If when you balance it off, and I'm talking about the cash column, yeah, and you end up with a balance brought down on credit side of the cash account. So on here, yeah, you've done something wrong, okay? Because I'm a mum with three kids and you can never have negative money in your purse. You've either got zero or you've got cash, okay? So my purse could never be overdrawn, yeah? It feels like it, but it can't be. So when it comes to cash... It's always going to have a balance carried down on the credit and brought down on the debit, okay? So, when you do a petty cash book, yeah, your carried down will be on the credit, your brought down will be on the debit, okay? So, that's my tip for today, okay? You're getting a lot of tips off me with these sessions, but please remember that because... You've got to think, you've got to use your logic, you've got to use your knowledge. And if you think, well, Sam says I could never have minus in my wallet or purse, you can't, okay? So it's got to be always on debit side. 
Okay then. So what we've got here on debit side, we've got a cash sale of 480. We've got Geol and KCAR and they've paid us and that's gone straight into bank because they're credit customers. You've got some more cash sales and then we've got this one on 29th which says cash and a little C in brackets, okay? That C means contra, okay? That means that something on the opposite side equals it, all right? So the credit side, you've got cash purchases. You've got M Ahmed, which we've paid. You've got rent, we've paid. K car, uh, C car, sorry. You've got wages. Then you've got cash purchases. And then you've got bank C, okay? So what this means is, is if you put, I'm just looking at the this transaction first here, yeah? What that means is you've taken... £500 out of cash and put it into the bank account, okay? If it was out of bank and into cash, you've taken it out of bank to put into your petty cash, all right? Now, that's the way you've got to think about it. So what you've done is you've taken it out of the cash tin, because remember, when we talk about cash, we don't want to have a lot of money in cash on the in the building because obviously if people pinch it and so on. So you need to minimise the amount of cash that you hold. So what we're saying here is, is based on what we've got and based on the cash sales, we're taking £500 out of cash and putting it into bank. OK, can everybody see that? Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. OK, then. So moving on, then, I want to show you how to balance off this cash book. OK. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try and not let it move. I must be too heavy handed. OK, I'm going to deal with the cash column first. OK. Now, I know that the cash column is the largest side would always be the debit. If not, I've done something wrong, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to balance the cash columns first, okay? Now, here's one I prepared earlier. So I've done the calculation. You're welcome to check that I've done it right because I did it yesterday and I've slept since then. So the cash column here is the largest, is the highest. OK, always will be. So this makes it simpler in an exam. You've not got to try and work out which is highest. So that should have in it one, five, six, zero, fifty two. OK. Flipping egg. I don't know why it keeps doing that. That figure needs to go on both sides. OK, because it total, that's the total, that's the highest total. OK, then what we're going to do is total up the cash column on the credit side, OK, which I believe totals, is it one, what did I say, totals? So you've got, I should be able to do that in my head, but I can't. 300 plus 360 plus 500. Okay, so that totals 1160. Okay, 1160 off your 1560.52 gives me 400 pound and 52 pence. That is the figure I write in the cash column. And that is my balance carried down figure at the 30th of September, okay? On the 1st of October then, the balance brought down is brought down onto the debit side because you can't have negative cash, okay? I'm not even touching it and it's doing that. Okay, so what I've done is, 
I totaled up my highest side first, which is the debit side. I put the totals on both sides of the cash columns. Take off the credit amounts to get my balance carried down. And then bring the balance brought down at the beginning of the next month. Okay. Is that okay before I move on to bank column? Yeah? You're good, you lot. Yeah? Please, if, if you sat there and you, you're worried, yeah, and everybody else is saying yes, don't be. If you've, if you've got a query, just tell me to go back over it, okay? Because I know sometimes... People, you know, get a bit worried thinking, oh, I'm not getting it. Everybody's different, okay? Okay, then. So let's move on to bank column then, okay? So what we've got to do is you've got to work out which is the highest side, okay? Now, I worked this out that the credit side is higher on this one, Okay? So it was the debit side on cash, which it always will be. And on this one, it's the um, it's the credit side. OK, so the total I got was one, four, four, five, seven, one. You put that on both sides. OK, here's a one there on red line. Take off your bank transactions which would give you a figure then of two two one seven one okay because the total of those bank transactions totals up one two two four okay so you take that off the highest side to get this balancing figure this then becomes the balance carried down at the 30th of September, which means then we bring the balance down at the 1st of October, okay? What does that mean then? What does that tell you now? Okay, yes. So, because the balance brought down now is on the credit side of the bank, it tells me it's now overdrawn. Okay, so what I've done is I've spent more than I've received. Okay, so it's gone from a positive bank balance to a negative bank balance. And the reason why it's a credit is because it's now, if you think of pearls, it's a liability. We owe that money to the bank, okay? Everybody okay with that? Yeah, brilliant. Okay, then. So, based on that, yeah, what we need to do is, if we were then posting it to the accounts, yeah, you would total up your cash sales, so these ones. You'd work out the VAT and you would credit the sales account, credit the VAT account. With your purchases, you would debit your purchases account, debit the VAT account, okay? So that's for your cash sales and purchases. That's your cash column. Your other column, yeah, so your G-Hall, your con, yeah, they would be credited in the trade receivables control account and credited in their individual account. And when it comes to the opposite entries, the credit side, yeah, the MR Med, which must be a credit supplier, yeah, we would debit the um, payables ledger control account. We debit the rent account. We debit the payables ledger, con uh, ledger control account again, and then we debit wages, okay? 
but we, we're going to look at how we do it analyzed because remember you don't put these into the main ledgers individually so we'd have to have an analyzed day book uh, an analyzed cash book okay so let's have a look at an analyzed cash book then so this is just the receipt side this is just the debit side okay so what we've got here is you've got your date, you've got your detail, you've got cash and bank. And what we've done with, based on the other slide, yeah, we've analysed it out because it makes it easier when we come to post the transaction, okay? So what we've done is we've worked out the VAT and we've worked out the net on the cash sale. G Hall uh, and K Khan have gone over straight to the sales ledger or trade receivables ledger as it should be, yeah, which is memorandum accounts and also main ledger account. So what you do there is you would total it up as it is here. You would credit the trade receivables control account and you would credit their individual account, okay? You can see there's no analysis for sales or VAT because that was done at the time we did the day book, the sales day book. Then what the, we've done is we've got all the cash sales and what we're going to do is we've debited them into the cash book. So we're going to credit the sales account, 1,000, and credit the VAT account, 200, okay? then it balances okay just going back to the previous slide we don't do anything with this because the double entry is being done for you okay because what you've done is is you've taken it out of the cash account and put it into the bank account so there is no double entry to be done because you've done it you've de you've credited that account and you've debited that account OK, so don't go think, oh, I've got to go and post it again because you haven't. It's done. All we've done is instead of using two T accounts, we've just posted it in a cash book. OK. Everybody OK with that? Yeah. Makes it easier when you've got an analysed cash book, I think, because, you know, you're working on your totals in your main ledger and then your individual transactions <coughs> for your customers. Yeah. Marvellous, marvellous. Okay. Okay, then. So your discounts allowed day book. Okay. Where did this, how did this discount come about based on what we talked about last week? There's only one way they can get discount at this point now. So we've sent them an invoice, the hours money. How have they done it? How have we given them discount? Perfect. Prompt payment. Okay. Prompt payment discount, cash settlement discount. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Fantastic. So what that means is they've paid us early. So if their terms are 30 days and we said to them, right, we will let you have 3% if you pay us in seven days. Okay. That's what that is. It's an incentive for us to get the money in early to help our cash flow, okay? So, when it comes to this in exam, yeah, and I'll show, I'm going to show you an exam style question in a minute. Remember that when you, they've sent you that check, the discount's already been taken off it. So, don't take it off again, okay? So, all you're doing with this is you're entering your credit note numbers, yeah, you've got your totals, yeah, and they need post into your main ledger, okay? So, discounts allowed is an expense to the business. What side of the account do we post an expense? Perfect debit. Okay, so we're going to debit discount allowed account. We're going to debit 
the that account. So what are we going to, which account are we going to credit? Brilliant. The receivables ledger control account. Okay. And the reason we're doing that is because we need to credit it. So it reduces the asset that the customers owe. Okay. So what you would do is you'd have end of month and it'd be discount allowed day book. I'm just using abbreviations. Yeah. Of twenty six fifty five, you'd have VAT of five pound thirty one. Discounts allowed. Day book, and then your total of thirty one pound eighty six would be credited in order to reduce the asset. So there would be like a balance brought down here of, I don't know, say £2,000. Yeah, because that's what would have been owing. Okay. That's the way you've got to think about it in this exam. All right. So if you've entered the total onto the receivables ledger control account credit side, when it comes to entering it into their account, it goes on the credit side of the account, okay? Everybody okay with that? Fantastic. Oh, kid, okay, that's brilliant. Okay, then. So, another document, then, that you've got to be aware of in this exam is what we call the remittance advice. A remittance advice basically tells us what's been paid. <laughs> okay, so if we are receiving money from a customer, these used to be sent, um, like you could have a check at bottom of it. So it'd say these, this is what we're paying and this is your check amount, which, which totals it. Now we do everything really by back. So this might just be emailed out or it could still be posted, okay? But what it does is it tells us what invoices and credit notes we're paying so that we can reconcile our account. Because remember, the trade receivables control account is a summary of the total of your memorandum accounts from your sales ledger, so your customers, okay? The people that, the customers that owe you money, OK, so when we as an accountant or bookkeeper, when we come to post transactions, we can't just guess at what invoices it is that, they, that they're paying. OK. If you think about it, if you add a um, supplier or a customer that have thousands of different invoices, yeah, to just try and guess it would be quite difficult because there might be some invoices that have got discrepancies on, so they're not paying it, so they could be on hold, okay? And what we don't want to do is hold the rest of the invoices up, so they might just say, well, we're not paying that one, we're paying these. <laughs> okay, so what it's got is, it's got the date of the transaction, so it's not the end of the month date. The end of the month date would probably be on the remittance advice somewhere, saying, you know, this is the payment and it'll be in your bank on such and such or the checks attached, yeah? Then you've got your invoices. Now, what the examiner wants to see is that you know what to do with transactions. Invoices are added together. Credit notes are deducted. And that would be the same whether it be a supplier invoice, uh, a supplier remittance or um, a customer remittance, really. Um so although we'd we'd send a remittance to a supplier, so we'd be paying them where this will have come from a customer because they're paying us, okay? But whichever way you look at it, credit notes are deducted, okay? Because credit note means that we'd either give them some prompt payment discount or 
they've sent goods back because they could be faulty and we've raised a, raised a credit note. So you just need to be aware of what a remittance advice is, how it works, how it looks, and what you do with the transactions because you may be asked to do one or fill one in in an exam. Okay. Okay, then. So this is an exam style question. This is actually a question that were um, on the AAT, I think it was Q2016 on their portal, you know, the revision site. It's not a live exam. But what it does do as well is it tells you the number of marks. Well, this, this one is worth 15 marks and it's a very, I don't want to say simple, but once you've got your head around entering the cash book, it is simple for 15 marks, okay? So the first thing you've got to think about is you're going to get marks for everything that you do, okay? So we can't penalise you. Say you got one figure wrong, but then you did the entries right. You won't be penalised for the whole thing. You will be penalised for what you've got wrong. So on this one then, this is a check stub, okay? So we've obviously made payments, okay? And it says we've made payments because it says it's credit side at cash book. So this is the opposite side. So the balance brought down in the cash book is credit in the bank account of 1986. Well, we've just said that we're overdrawn, okay? So this business bank account, is £1,986 overdrawn already, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're saying check stub number, whatever it is, 165734. So that is to Sand, Sandhu Supplies, okay? Now you see here, you've got this little um, like arrow when you click on that, it will give you options, okay? And it'll give you every possible option and that you could pick and it'd be wrong, okay? The details are the supplier name, okay? So do that first if it makes you feel better. So then you've got Pen Limited. And then on here, you've got Corsa Limited, Cash Received for Goods. Now, I would put there cash purchases okay if there's not a cash purchases it could just be purchases or it could be course limited but i would go with purchases or cash purchases on that one okay then enter the amount saying well if it says check stub yeah you can't write a check and it clear through a cash account can you so it's got to be a bank account so you've got six seven three and you've got two nine nine okay remember these are credit cost uh, credit suppliers and the reason you can see that is because it's got a purchase ledger account number okay so that tells me this is a, a credit supplier so you don't have to put anything in VAT you don't have to put anything in cash purchases so what you do is straight over to trade payables you'd enter in the amount, okay? Now you've got the cash purchases to deal with. Now, what did I say last week? R-T-F-Q. Read the flipping question, okay? It states here it includes VAT. So there's no VAT, Cathy, because these are credit suppliers, which means that we bought off them and we're paying, at, say, 30 days later, okay? When we bought off them, we'd have entered the purchases and the VAT at that time. So it would have gone into the um, purchase day book and we'd have dealt with the purchases and the VAT then, okay? What we're saying is now is that we've now paid, okay? So we've paid the, credit, the trade payables. The cash purchases, it says it's cash, okay? So you've got 390, okay? It says it includes VAT. So 390 divided by 6 gives me £65 VAT, okay? 
which must mean then the balance is cash purchase of 325. Okay. Okay then. So we're now going to total up the columns. So we've got 325. We've got 972. I've got 65. I've got 390 cash. Now, this is an error that everybody does in exam. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people, and I see it when I'm marking. They forget to add in this figure, okay? Don't forget to add that in, okay? So what you've got is you've got a total of 2958, okay? So that's the balance when it comes to balancing off the the cash book we'll deal with carried down figure and that as we as we move along with the studies okay this is the credit side now we've got to do something with the debits so the cash purchase total would be debited in purchases okay the vat would be debited in vat the total trade payables would be debited in the trade payables control account. Okay. Everything else is now posted. Okay. The only other thing you've got to do is what? So your general ledger by doing what I've put here is now posted. What other thing have we got to do? Yeah, we'll balance it off later because we can only balance it off when you've got a debit and a credit side. But what else? Have we... Brilliant, Jenny. We've got to post these to the memorandum account. Okay. Remember, whatever side it goes on in the trade payables control account, it will go on in their account. So we would debit. Sandu Supplies and Pen Limited. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, then. So, straight away, if you've done that in an exam, you've got 15 marks already. All right. So, it's quite a. I don't want to keep saying simple, but it's it's a nice task that you could gain good marks if you read the question carefully and you take your time and you understand it, okay? And that's what we want. We want you to gain them marks, as many as possible, so that we know that you're, you're understanding it okay. Okay, then. So let's move on. <clears throat> These are these are also ones that um, students tend to to not really like, okay? Because there's quite a few transactions. So it says on this one, and like I said, these are just exam style questions. It says place a tick next to the three transactions on the statement of account from which the prompt payment discount can be taken. So it says Jack's PLC has received his statement of account. From a credit supplier who's offering 2% prompt payment discount for, for, for payment within 14 days. Well, today's date is the 30th of June, okay? So, 30th of June minus 14 would give me the 16th, okay? So, anything from the 16th onwards, it could take discount, okay? Now, that's the easiest way to, to work it out. Um, so, basically, you should be able to say he can take discount if he wants from the bottom three, okay? Because if the pain within 14 days, 17 plus 14, yeah, would be 31, but we know there's only 30 days in June, so that's 1st of July and so on, Okay. 15th of June plus 14 days, 
is it's definitely not 60. I think it's 29 off the top of my head, but this calculator is telling me anything but 29th, okay? Today's date is the 30th of June, so you can't take anything from the 15th of June or before, okay? So again, a simple three marks, all right? Just by saying, right, it's 30th of June, minus off 14 days, so minus off 14, you can work out what, what it is from that. Okay, then. Now it says, check the supplier's account against the statement of account. So this is your memorandum account, yeah? So this is Osborne Limited. And what they want you to do is check what's in, in here is on that statement. Because we're saying in our accounts, this is our, so this is in our accounts, yeah? This statement is from the supplier to us. Okay, so what we want to do is make sure that our account totals up to their statement of account. Okay, so what we got. First thing you need to look at is look at the balance brought forward figure. Okay, so you've got 3582. Well, I can't see that on the statement, but what I can see is in debit side, you've got a credit note and you've got a payment. So take off the credit note of 125 and it equals the payment. Hang on, let's have a look. 3582 minus 125 equals 3457. So those two transactions clear that transaction. Okay, so they're not outstanding. So they shouldn't be on this statement. Okay. I can see on statement that, yep, yeah, that one's there. That one's there. That one's there. That one's there. That's there. And that one's there. Okay. <clears throat> so what we're saying is, oh, hang on a minute. Oh, there's a problem with that one. So it looks like they're all there, but then look at that transaction. Yeah? What's the difference between that transaction and that transaction? Quite sneaky, that. Brilliant. It's a transpose figure. Okay. So we've got a we've got a query there. All right. So we'd have to deal with that. And really, you'd go with your supplier statement. So you'd correct your account because it's going to reduce the amount that you owe. What it's doing then is it says enter the transaction that's missing from the supplier's account. Okay. Well, we know that that transaction is missing. We've not got that in our accounts. So all you do is, is from this arrow, you pick invoice number 1546, amount 319, or whatever information it is. But they will be there in that drop down. okay? Then it says, enter the transaction amount that don't match. So you've got invoice number 1585, don't match. okay? And that's all it's asking you to do for two marks. All right. So really, really simple as long as you're RTFQ and you read the data and you don't just jump straight in because accountants have got, and especially trainee accountants, we've got this way of thinking, we know what they're asking. I'm not going to read data. I'm just going to jump straight in. And that's not what they're asking at all. Okay, so please take your time with it. Okay, then. So this is the type of thing as well that I need you to, to look out for, especially when you're doing our assignments. Okay. Now, what happens is, is when people come to enter cash book, what they do is they see the amount that we've received off our customer and then they deduct the discount. The discount's already been deducted. The check amount is what you're receiving, okay? 
So the easiest thing to do with this is get your get your amounts into your cash book straight away. So you've got two, two, six, forty-seven, one oh four, twenty-two, one six eight, ninety, three oh five, nine eight. Okay, customer, you've got scary, ginger, sporty, and posh. And you've got third at seven, sixth at seven, thirteenth at seven, and nineteenth at seven. Okay, so if you're as old as me, you'll know that's spy skills. Okay, so I weren't right sure what I was doing. When I wrote this using spy skills names, but hey ho. Okay, then. Then it says here you've got cash sales for the month. Okay. So the date would be the 31st of July, end of July, because it's for the full month. It's my birthday as well. Okay. You've got cash sales, and the total, including that, is one, six, eight. Oh, okay. Deal with the customers first. Okay, so you've got straight into receivables ledger. One, six, eight, nine, ten, three, oh, five, ninety-eight. Then deal with the cash sale. So you've got one six eight divide by six gives me two hundred and eighty pound VAT. Okay, which means that if my calculations are right, I should have 1400 in sales. Okay, total the columns. So I've got 14 there, I've got 280 there. I think I've totaled these up. I've got eight. Oh, 0557 there and I've got 248557 there so those three on this example would equal your total okay so all I've done there is I've entered the receipts that I've received in and the cash sale yeah all I've done. I'll deal with discounts in a bit because the discounts have to go in the discounts allowed day book. Okay. Then from there, you would post it. So what you're going to do, you're going to post the sales. You're going to post the VAT. Okay. Um, 31st of 31st at seven cash book cash book okay so your sales now your cash sales now balance because you debited the cash book credited sales credited that and then we're going to enter into the receivables ledger oh i think it's that one yeah 80557 cash book 31st of july okay your double entry now for your receipts and for your cash sale is now done, okay? The only thing you've got to do is enter it into the individual accounts, okay? So you've got on third of the, oops, third at seventh, you've got cash book. Remember, in their accounts, it's the transaction day of, Two two six four seven. You've got six at seven, which I think is ginger of one o four twenty two. Then you've got thirteen at seven is sporty. and nineteenth at seven is posh. Oh, kiddok. So now I've entered them into their accounts. Okay. So all my discounts have allowed them. The receipts, the cash sales is now entered. Okay. 
The only other thing I've got to do now is deal with the discounts, okay? So I'm just going to put any credit note number in for this, but if you'd have one that would um, just continue from your other one. Okay, so what I've got is on the 3rd of the 7th, scary, total 684. Then I've got six at seventh, uh, no, sorry, 13th of the seventh, I've got sporty. That's not everybody will take the discount. And 19th at seventh, I've got mm, posh, posh spice, £9.18. You need to work out the VAT. Why does it keep doing that? Okay, so divide it by six. One pound fourteen, um, not point five seven, and one pound fifty three. Total minus the VAT gives you five seventy two eight five seven six five, and then total up your columns. So you've got nineteen forty four three twenty four. And 16.20. Remember, your net and your VAT must equal each other. So it would total the 19.44. Okay. Then what we do is we need to post them to the individual accounts. Okay. Because if we don't, it's still telling us that they owe us money. Okay. So you've got. Third of the seventh, um, discounts allowed day book, £6.84. 13th of the seventh, discount allowed day book, £3.42. And then you've got 19th of the seventh, Discount allowed day book of £9.18. Okay. Yep, no problem, Danny. That's absolutely fine. Drop me an email and I'll get it sent out to you. Okay, then. So that's posting now from day books to from your sales and sales returns day books to your main ledgers and sub and memorandum ledgers cash books cash sales all post into your main ledgers and your memorandum um accounts okay so you pretty much have got a good understanding on that now what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly go through the recording of purchases because if we've done that, if we've done everything on sales, all we're doing is it's opposite side for purchases. Okay, so if we're crediting as sales, we're debiting as purchases. If we credit sales VAT, we're debiting purchase VAT. Okay, so we're just going to do opposite. So this but won't take as long. It's um, it's just really refreshing what we've already been through. Okay. So your documents that you use when you're purchasing is basically similar to what we've used before. Okay. If you've if you've got if you're um, buying, say, printing, okay, or paper for printing, yeah, you'd have a supplier and you'd have a supplier price list. So you know what it's gonna cost for you to do a job for your customer. Okay, so remember these are things you're buying in to do your job to be able to trade. If it's something special, you'd get a quotation, which we talked about last week. And if you want to place the order, you would then place it with a purchase order. So like a customer would send us a purchase order, we'd send one to the supplier. Once it's been delivered, we'd get a delivery note. If we want to send anything back, we'd get either, well, sorry, we could then sign a goods receive note to say that we've received it and we've received everything that's on the delivery note and we accept it. If that's the case, it'll then go to invoicing. 
if we send anything back, we'll send it with a returns note, a goods returns note. That's saying that we've rejected it because it could be broke or it could be the wrong thing they've sent us. Then we'd get a credit note and then we'd get a statement and then when we pay, we would send a remittance advice to say what we've paid for, okay? So very similar to sales, you're just doing it the opposite way around. All right. Okay, then. Your purchase day book, then. I'm not balancing these off or anything because they're already done. And it's based on what we've done before, but the opposite, okay? So this is your purchase day book. Same information. You've got your date. You've got your supplier name rather than your customer name. You've got an invoice number. Now, remember, um, no problem, Laura. Remember your invoice number when it comes to um, to doing your day books, your purchase day books. The one they won't carry on sequentially like they did on sales because all your per all your suppliers will use different numbering systems. Then you've got your total, your VAT, and your purchases, and then you've got others. Remember your purchases or goods that you're buying to resell or to to you know to use on customers' work and so on. Anything else like it could be rent, whatever, or or motor vehicle or things like that. If it's in the purchase day book, it means you've bought it and you're paying for it over. 30 days or whatever, you're not paying for it cash, okay? So this one, you've got a phone bill, for instance, that you owe money for, you've not paid for it because you might have 14 days credit or so on, okay? So if this is the case then, what you do is you're going to debit your purchases account, you're going to debit your VAT, and you're going to debit other expenses account, Okay? Could be broken down further. You could have telephone, you could have motor, whatever. But we're just going to call it other for now. Which means then that this total would be credited in the payables ledger control account. Okay? So that's basically saying that that's a liability. We owe that money. All right? Does that make sense? So think back of what you already know. Perfect. All we're doing is opposite. Excellent. So when it comes to purchase purchasing then, yeah? So these, remember, are your memorandum accounts, okay? And they are on the credit side because they're a liability. We owe Wilkinson, Ahmed, Immingham Funds, Power Motors, we owe them money, okay? So it stays as a liability, but then when you pay them, you would credit your cash book and debit their account, okay, and debit the trade payables control account, all right? So that's why they're shown as a liability in their individual account because we owe them money, okay? Then you can see by posting to your main ledger accounts, your debits then equal your credits. And that's what we want. We need it to balance all the time. Okay. So from your day books, you're debiting your main ledgers and crediting then your control account. Okay. Okay, then again, exactly the same with purchase returns. Remember the purchase returns do not go as a credit in the purchases account. We open a new account, okay? So what you would do is purchase returns, yeah? You would debit the individual memorandum account to reduce the liability owing. And then you would enter it into the purchase returns account, yeah? Would be a debit. That would be a debit. Sorry, sorry, hang on a minute. Hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me just... It's going a bit wayward, this. I don't know why it's doing it. Here it is. Huh? I'll get there. Ben, I 
Okay. Okay then. So if purchases is a debit, purchase returns has got to be a credit. That's got to be a credit. And the total has got to be a debit in the trade receivables, trade payables control account. And the reason for that is because we are, I don't know why it's doing this. Oh. I think it's my heavy hands, isn't it? Okay, so the reason why we're doing that is because it's we're trying to reduce the liability. Okay, so, right, hang on a minute, Janet. Let me just try and, right. So you're happy with the purchase day book, yeah? So you're debiting your purchases, debit your VAT, and then credit your trade payables, yeah? So when it comes to the purchase returns, we don't put anything in the purchase account. So what we're doing is we are crediting So when when a customer pays us, you would debit the cash book account. These are suppliers, remember? So you debit the cash book because you're receiving the money in. And then you would credit the customer account and the trade receivables control account. And the reason for that is when a customer pays, a customer's an asset, which is a debit. So when they pay, you need to reduce that debit that they owe you. So that's why you would credit their account. So when it comes to purchases, let me just go back. Yeah. So when you're entering into... A purchase account so you have bought something it's the reason why in their individual accounts it's a credit is it's because it's a liability you owe them the money okay so at this stage all we've done is we've taken the individual amounts and credited their account so Wilkinson, Ahmed and so on okay which is what you've got here, your memorandum account, okay? Then what we've done is in the main ledger account, we've then debited the purchases, debited other expenses, debited VAT, and credited the control account. And that is we owe them money. It's a liability, okay? So think about that. It's a liability until we've paid them. Yeah, so it, it used to be called the Purchase Ledger Control Account. Now it's called Trade Payables Control Account. Okay? So it's exactly the same. So Payables Ledger Control Account, Trade Payables, exactly the same. It used to be called Purchase Ledger Control Account. There's so many, there's so many different names that they've used. This, I think, went back to not Q2016. I'm sure it were on Q2013. Um, but yeah, it's exactly the same. Okay, so you've entered it into their account, you've entered it into main ledger accounts. So when it comes to the purchase returns day book, if you remember what I said last week, you've got to have a separate purchase returns day book, okay? So what you would do is you would have a purchase returns account. You'd have, you'd then have the VAT account, which would use the same VAT account, okay? The, the, you'd only have one VAT account. You won't have two separate for in and out, okay? And then you've got your purchase or your trade payables control account. So what you're doing is, is if you can remember using pearls that your purchases is a debit, your purchase returns has got to be a credit. If your purchase VAT is a credit, it is a debit, sorry, your purchase returns VAT has got to be a credit. So it's the opposite, okay? So if they're a credit, the total would have to be a debit in the trade payables control account, okay? 
So your pearls is really, really important. So if you weren't here last week, then look at when when the video goes live, look at the the last week's lesson, okay? Because your pearls is really important. Go on then. I'm wait, just waiting. Jenny's just typing, so that's why I'm confused. I missed last week. Okay. What I'll do, Jenny, can you do me a favour? Can you drop me an email? Um, my email address is sam.h at premiertraining.co.uk. Um, Helen or Alan, if you can type it in, type in box for me. If you email me, I will send you last week's um, recording. And then any questions you've got, get in touch. All right. It's really important that, you know, you don't stay confused. Is everybody okay with that? Do you want me to go back through anything based on that? I've just got a few people typing, so I'm just going to wait a minute. Can you move in with me? <laughs> hey, my husband might be happy with that. Oh, thanks, Alan. That's brilliant. <laughs> okay, then. So moving on. I want to just move on to now discounts received. So we've done discounts allowed, okay, which we're allowing customers and we're allowing them. So it means that it's an expense to the business. That's why discounts allowed is a debit. Discounts received means that we, it's like additional income that we've got because we're receiving this discount, which we thought we would have paid to our supplier, okay? So remember, discounts received is a credit because it's a receivable. It's revenue, like we extra revenue we've got. Discounts allowed is an expense or a debit. Okay, then. So what we've got is we've taken our discount. That means that we've paid them early. It can't be trade discount because trade or bulk discount would have been given at the point of sale. So they'd have taken that off before they worked out the VAT and so on. So this has got to be prompt payment discount. We're paying early to our, um, our suppliers. Okay, then. So if discounts received is a credit, the net amount would be credited in the discount received account. The VAT would be a credit in the VAT account. So the total must be a debit in the pay, I want to, payables ledger control account. Okay. I don't know why this machine doesn't like me today. Okay, so that's a debit. So what we're saying is, is by them giving us this discount, it reduces the amount that we owe them. So if you've credited discounts received, credited VAT, and debit your um, trade payables control account, I think that's correct, yeah, then what you've got to do, you've got to do the same in their account because what we're doing is, is by posting this discount, it reduces the amount of the liability that we owe. OK, it's really, really important that because if you forget to do it, it's going to mean that your trade payables like your, your memorandum accounts, Wilkinson's and Ahmed won't necessarily balance to your trade payables control account. And it's got to they've got to balance. OK. OK, then. So moving on with that. You'd then post it to your accounts just like we've, we've done before. So in your main ledger accounts, don't forget you're posting the totals and you're doing it based on the end of the month. So your credits and your debits should always balance in your main ledger account. Okay. 
Any questions? So I think we're done. Okay. Anybody got any questions whatsoever? If you want me to go back over anything, I don't mind. Is there anything else? You need me to go through. You need to watch it again. That's fine. Oh, you're going to love me, aren't you? Listening to me all the time. <laughs> Your brain feels fried. That's why you need to now. What I would do is I wouldn't do anything today. I'd watch it again. Listen to me babble on again. OK, if you get any questions, email me. But what I'd also like you to do is for next Friday, before we start the lesson next Friday, I'm not sure what time I'm starting next Friday. Um, if you've got any questions or you want me to go over anything, just write them down and we'll go over them next next week. OK, but your brain will feel fried. Bearing in mind, I've just taught you through a few chapters so I could, I'm expecting, if any of you are my, my student, I'll be expecting assignment two. Okay, so if you've not done assignment one, you need to get that done. And then you can crack on with assignment two. Okay. Um, I know I've had a few assignments in, but I'm not sure if the students are here who I've just marked. Okay. Okay, then, what chapters will it be covering next week? Just bear with me, and I will let you know um, next week. So, today we've done five and six. Next week, I will be doing chapter seven, making payments. Um, um, it could be seven, eight, and nine. So your brain will be fried then, okay? Can't access assignment two, even though I completed it. How do I? Okay, Caroline, can you just email me and I'll have a and I'll have a look at it as soon as I get back to my desk, uh, because I'm I'm here for another hour and a half. I'll be setting off driving home about four o'clock. So yeah, I will sort you that out, no problem. Anybody else got any questions? If not. I'm going to love you and leave you. Um, if you, anybody would like to do me a, a review on Trustpilot, that would be amazing because uh, being a manager, it's not often I get any reviews. I just normally get a bit of grief. Could someone send me a screenshot of what I should be seeing on screen? Yes, what I'll do, David, um, can you please drop me an email now and I'm going to send you my PowerPoints. And if you're struggling to see what's on screen next week, I'll try and send it you once I finish writing it. Oh, Caroline, can you tell us your last name? And Alan will look now for you while we're while I'm still sat here. Okay. No problem, David. Right. So we'll get that sorted for you, Caroline. Any problems, like I said, either drop me an email, give us a ring. But if not, I shall speak to you all next week. Have a fantastic week and contact me if you get stuck. Marvellous. And like I say, if you don't mind doing me a trust pilot review, it might make me want to do even more of these. Ooh. Right. See you later, guys. Have a fantastic one. And well done today. Really, really impressed. Really impressed. And I know your brain's fried, so you're all allowed a nice cup of tea. See you all later.